this is the fifth lecture in this series and this specific lecture I uh, will be discussing some of the fundamentals of lubrication. Uh, I think in the beginning of this course I have uh, very categorically mentioned the tribology is a subject uh, which, which is being widely pursued by mechanical engineers and much to a much less extent by uh, material scientists. And in the mechanical engineering domain uh, significant research is also being conducted on lubrication aspects. Okay. So, lubrication is also uh, a subject where mechanical engineers often interact with chemists or people from chemistry department to, de uh, to develop new lubricants. So, I <coughs> reiterate my very beginning uh, my statement in the very beginning the tribology is truly truly an interdisciplinary subject. So, it cuts across the mechanical engineering to material science to chemistry also. And also uh, some of the mathematicians they also work on the lubrications particularly the lubrication involves uh, the solution of many complex uh, mathematical equations uh, to find out the uh, life of a lubricant to find out the lubrication efficiency and so on. So, they are also mathematicians play a big role. So, uh, since this course is particularly meant for the senior undergraduates and the graduate students uh, in the primarily in the field of material science and also to some extent in mechanical engineering. The purpose of this lecture is not to get into a significant depth into lubrication, but to discuss very fundamentals of the lubrication different type of lubrication, how the friction coefficient is reduced as a function of uh, speed sliding speed and so on what we call as Strybeck curve. So, how to how what is the qualitative description of the Strybeck curve and how that curve also tells you that how uh, the friction coefficient varies in different lubrication designs right L different lubrication designs that is also important. So, all these aspects will constitute the, uh, the this particular lecture on lubrication. Now, data, let us quickly recap. Uh, in last lecture, I have told you that frictional heating, right? Frictional heating at tribological surfaces. So, this frictional heating at tribological surfaces. Uh, that is very important that it can be quantified using multiple formulas and multiple equations that I have shown in the last, uh, last lecture. Now, this frictional eating the point is that how to reduce the consequences of frictional heating. to extend lifetime. So, lifetime extension is also very important for many machine structures or machine elements. So, there are two ways you can do from materials perspective one can use materials with high thermal transport properties. Okay. So, there are two uh, scenarios I am, I am trying to explain. One is using materials with high thermal transport properties. 
So, with high thermal transport properties means that thermal conductivity should be higher. Uh, so, this K value which should be higher so that that heat is dissipated by more uh, conduction and number 2 is the use of lubrication. So, this option 1 essentially lies in the domain of material science and option 2 lies in the domain of mechanical engineers, lubrication, lu mechanical engineers and chemists. So, this in this particular lecture, I will just describe that what are the very basics of the lubrication. So, essentially the therefore, this slide actually connects my discussion with the earlier two slides. The purpose of the lubrication is to reduce wear at the contacting tribo surfaces, to reduce friction, to transfer heat away from the sliding surfaces. Okay. And in some cases, the, when there is three body wire situation, three body wire means there are two fast bodies like matting solids 1 and 2 and there are debris particles. So, it is like 1 and then this is solid 1, this is solid 2. If there are some debris particles they are formed and they are getting entrapped. So, this is the wire debris particles and this wire debris particles in tribology literature they constitute the third body. And this third body you can <coughs> mention you can see that how this third body can also take part in this uh, wire phenomena. So, the one of the purpose of lubrication is to flush away this third body uh, this wire debris particles from contacting surfaces. So, what is the mechanism by which lubricants work? Lubricant essentially adheres to contact surface to form an lubricating film and that keeps the contacting surfaces apart. So, this is very important. Essentially, if you have this is the first two bodies. So, if this is the this is your uh, flat now, lubricants essentially makes a flame here. They makes a flame and this flame is important that keeps these two bodies apart. Now, three major types of lubrication. One is flu full fluid flame, second one is a mixed lubrication, third one is the boundary lubrication. We will see all these different types of lubrication one by one in the next few slides. Okay. Parameters which govern the efficiency of lubrication, uh, this actually depends on the flame thickness of the lubricating layer H and viscosity of the lubricant. Now, flame thickness of the lubricating layer is H and this H depends on the viscosity to the power 0 0.7. What is speed? Speed is nothing but sliding speed to the power 0 0.7 and what is load? What is the load that is acting on the, this is the normal load which acts on the surfaces, tribological surfaces. So, load you can see it is inversely proportional, but out of this what you see viscosity and speed is very strong influence 0 0.7, whereas load is little bit weaker dependence because it is minus 0 0.13. Okay. So, from this expression you can very clearly see that lubricating flame thickness would be higher for more viscous lubricant and also at higher sliding speeds. Okay. So, this is a very simple mathematical expression which can be correlated to find out what would be the lubricate, lubricant flame thickness. What is in, in view of this particular equation, what are the what are the properties of a lubricant? The, there are five properties I have mentioned. A, a good lubricant should have a low shear strength, it should have high viscosity, third one it has a it should have high thermal conductivity and fourth one it should be inert does not react and fifth one it provides chemical protection against corrosion. So, what it means is that 
Suppose that two solids at the contact, if they corrode each other, lubricant should stop this corrosion, should give this protection and lubricant should not react with the material. So, the tribochemical reaction should not happen. Why it should have a high thermal conductivity? If it is a high thermal conductivity, then they can dissipate heat from the contacting surfaces. And high viscosity means if the higher the viscosity, if you look at this particular equation, higher the viscosity more would be the H. More would be the H means more would be the flame thickness. More would be the flame thickness means the two surfaces can be physically separated or two surfaces can be made uh, physically apart from each other and so that will reduce the friction and wear as well. Just a comparison of the friction values of this uh, typical lubricated and unlubricated conditions. Let us take the example of self mated hardened steel. In the unlubricated conditions, it is 0.5 to 1. In the boundary lubrication, it goes down to 0.1 to 0.2. So, as you see that in the boundary lubrication, the coefficient of friction substantially reduced. In the most mixed lubrication, it is even lower, it is 0 0.05 to 1 and hydrodynamic lubrication, it is even going down to 0 0.05. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the typical adhesive wear rate, so as you can see that coefficient of friction goes down, right? If you go from top to bottom, as you go from boundary to mix to hydrodynamic lubrication, the coefficient of friction goes to even lower than 0 0.05. Now, how does the lubrication influence the wear rate of the similar metals, let us say self mated steel. So, this bottom table essentially shows you the order of magnitude of the wear rate. So, in tribology literature, it is not the exact value of the wear rate that is important, but it is the order of magnitude that is important. Uh, what you see here, the first case that dry unlubricated conditions, the wear rate is 10 to the power minus 14 meter cube per Newton meter, that is the wear rate. In if it goes to mixed lubrication, boundary lubrication condition, two orders of magnitude lower, 10 to the power minus 16. If it goes to mixed lubrication, it goes to minus 10 to the minus 17 and it goes to hydrodynamic lubrication, it said the no measurable wear. What it means is that wire rate is so small, you cannot measure to any reliable manner by any experimental technique. So, essentially it remains more or less flat, there is no wear on the surfaces. So, from both the things, if you can see that both the COF and wire rate that reduce, COF and wire rate systematically decreases as you go from boundary lubrication to mixed lubrication to hydrodynamic lubrication. So, this, this particular behavior, it is more or less consistent in, in the case of lubrication, in the case of the use of lubrication. Okay. <clears throat> so, now if you look at this hydrodynamic lubrications, there are conformal contacts, what you can see that two solid surfaces, they are in conformal contact with each other because essentially the surfaces, the two matting surfaces, they conform to each other. Now, if you put the lubrications here, this is the lubrication film or this is the lubricant here if you can use, then that will make this, this surface separate and this surface separate. Similarly, this is also conformal solid. So, these are two surfaces, one is rotating and again there are, there is uh, very clear conformity and their hydrodynamic lubrication plays an important role. Typical non-conformal contacts, for example, gears, right. So, this is called gear tooth, right. So, these two tooth uh, in the gears, they are, they essentially represent non-conformal contact. So, again gear against cams, again it is a non-conformal contact, ball bearings. So, this is one ball in the, one of the earlier lectures I have mentioned that one of the innovation that has happened in the field of ball bearings is called hybrid ball bearings. Like you have a metallic raceway 
and you have a ceramic balls. Now, ceramic balls can be either silicon nitride or sealon balls which has a good wear resistance that is used as a ball and you have a metallic raceway that is a steel raceway. Okay. <clears throat> now, comes to the elasto hydrodynamic lubrication. Now, if you look at these two non-conformal contacts, right? this is being blown up here. So, this is one tooth kind of things, gear tooth and this another gear tooth. Now, this is pressed against each other. According to Newton's law, every action is an equal and opposite reaction. If it is F n here, it should be F n from the other tooth also. Now, use lubricants here. So, this lubricants will penetrate into the interface between the two tooth. And if you blow it up, if you see here, in this particular lubrication design, you can now solve some of the basic equations of the fundamental lubrication equations to find out that what is the elasto hydrodynamic lubricant film thickness and how it is distributed in spatially like if you go from one end to another end. There are two things you can see here. So, the things that, so essentially this surface would correspond to this particular surface and this surface corresponds to the bottom one corresponds to this one and this is your lubricant. Okay. So, and this regime that we are operating is the elastro hydrodynamic lubrication. So, there is hydrogen contact stress distribution which you have seen earlier that is modified in the presence of in the presence of lubricant and also there is elastro hydrodynamic uh, lubricant pressure distribution because of the lubrication that how this elastro hydrodynamic lubrication that is changing. And there is temperature distribution, temperature distribution it showed a very skewed. So, in both these elastro hydrodynamic pressure distribution and elastro hydrodynamic temperature distribution, you see it shows more skewed distribution. So, this skewed distribution is very clear from these non-conformal contacts. However, hydrogen pressure distribution it shows more symmetric distribution the way it is also expected. So, in this lubrication designs, one of the fundamental equation that one has to solve is partial differential equation and what you see that is in the x y coordinate, the Cartesian coordinates del by del x is h cube, h is your uh, fluid film thickness, del p is your lubricant film pressure, this is not your hydrogen contact pressure remember. Again similar equation del by similar expression del by del y h cube del p by del y is equal to 6 u capital U is your relative fluid velocity, eta is your dynamic viscosity and d h by our d x is that how the fluid film thickness that varies with respect to x. What it means that this fluid film thickness is h here. Now, as you go here fluid film thickness is reduced, but as you go here fluid film thickness is again increases. So, if you see h 1, h 2, h 3 and if you say this is h 4, h 1 to h 4 this will increase. So, h 4 is greater than h 3 is greater than h 2 and may be h 4, h 2 is more or less similar to h 1. So, this fluid film thickness how it is increases with respect to x that is also calculated. So, if you solve these equations, uh, then you get the solution and then that would be very important and other, th other point that you must notice here that eta is not a simple viscosity, it is dynamic viscosity at pressure P. Okay. This how this dynamic viscosity also changes with pressure. Now, Baru's exponential model tells you that eta is equal to eta naught exponential e to the power alpha p. So, alpha is the pressure viscosity coefficient and eta naught is your dynamic viscosity at atmospheric pressure that is p is equal to 1 atmosphere. Okay. Now, all those things uh, the equations that I have shown you in the very beginning of the last slide, if you solve it with the given boundary conditions, then what you get 
minimum film thickness, minimum lubrication oil film thickness can be expressed by this particular equation. H mean is equal to 3.63 that is R x is the effective radius in the x direction. Capital U is the non-dimensional parameter for speed. G capital G is non-dimensional parameter for materials. W is your non-dimensional parameter for load and K is your non-dimensional parameter of the contact geometry. And you also see here R in the lambda right and this lambda is nothing but H mean divided by R square Q 1 plus R square Q 2. So, what is R Q? You remember in the one of the lectures I have told you about the R A and R Q. R A is your average surface roughness and R q is the RMS roughness. So, you have to take R q here to calculate the value of lambda which you have to put it in this particular equation. So, this will give you that what is the minimum oil film thickness. In the mixed lubrication regime <laughs> you will get a very interesting uh, picture in terms of how the uh, elasto hydrodynamic uh, pressure that goes through a transition. Now, these are the two matting solids, two non-conformal contacts 1 and 2 and this is your lubrication L in the yellow marks. Now, if you look at this particular contact region and the way it goes, it is little bit tapered in this positive x direction and you know, a minus x direction and then pressure it goes through non-symmetric manner it changes and it is repeated again in, in the fluid space in this particular regime. So, this behavior is kind of repeated and this is called elastohydrodynamics contact spots. This is fairly important curve, Strybeck curve. So, along the y axis it is the coefficient of friction that is being plotted. Along the x axis it is plotted eta, v and f. Eta is your viscosity v is your sliding speed and f is your force. And then how this eta value changes? Eta changes in a very non-linear manner in the boundary layer boundary lubrication regime eta drops to some extent, but this decrease in the boundary lubrication regime is much at lower extent compared to the mixed lubrication regime because if you see that decrease is very significant and very substantial the way it goes down uh, from boundary to mixed lubrication. In the elasto hydrodynamic uh, lubrication design that coefficient of friction does not increase to a much significant extent it is more or less constant, but it increases to uh, some measurable manner with parameters which are plotted ag around the x axis. For example, if the sliding velocity keeps on increases, so therefore, eta v by a value also increases, but that will not cause significant increase in the coefficient of friction that will increase only minimum that will cause only minimal increase in the uh, coefficient of friction. So, essentially low coefficient of friction will be maintained under uh, a longer window or much larger window of the sliding speed in the elasto hydrodynamic lubrication regime. Okay. So, uh, these other things that you know at the beginning of this uh, uh, lecture on the lubrication I have also mentioned that this coefficient of friction uh, uh, not only is reduced in lubrication regime, but also the wear rate is also reduced right. I have given you few uh, examples for the self metered hardened steel and then I have shown that how the uh, orders of magnitude of the wire rate decreases in different lubrication regime. Now, what you see here coefficient of friction mu is plotted against lambda and what is lambda? lambda has been defined here lambda is nothing but h mean that is minimum uh, fl fluid flame thickness divided by r q 1 square by r q 2 square. That means, if it is r q 1 here and if it is r q 2 here 
and this is your h mean here. So, this h mean divided by the square root of these two terms would give you the lambda value. And if you plot this coefficient of friction as a function of lambda, again it shows a very non-linear manner, it essentially decreases and that to significant extent followed by very small increase in the quotient of friction in the elastohydrodynamic lubrication design. And in all those things, what you see that mechanism of the surface interaction also changes. For example, in the boundary lubrication, the the asperity contacts the interaction that will dominate and in the mixed lubrication it has a very high effect on the extension of the life in the large in the later part of the mixed lubrication that will have considerably low effect. In the elastodynamic lubrication at least some asperity contacts some means it is much much lesser than this one and in the later part of the elastohydrodynamic lubrication it is a full flame that means this lubricant flame will be completely maintained uh, and that will separate out the two matting solids from physical contact. So, this is one of the industrial example like 4 ball wire tester to study the lubricants and this 4 ball wire tester is very important to uh, screen various commercial lubricants in the industry. So, <coughs> what I am going to do uh, in the next couple of lectures is that we will apply this uh, particular knowledge that we have gained so far from the friction, wear and lubrication and then we will we will uh, we'll also now start with that the next thing is that wear mechanisms. So, wear mechanisms, wear is the uh, the way this term is de defined, wear is the <coughs> constant material removal from two contacting surfaces which are in relative motion. So, the whole spectrum of tribology is essentially uh, the friction and wear of the two contacting surfaces in relative motion. So, therefore, wear which involves the material removal that must take place when the two solids are in relative motion that is absolutely important. Now, the other things as we go along the way that wear mechanisms and so on, we will also see that how the different materials can be developed. For example, I said that materials with high thermal conductivity or thermal transport properties, there is something called self lubricating material self lubricated flame right. Now, this self lubricated flame one of the approach can be that you can use the self bulk material, but on the bulk material you can deposit a thin layer of let us say titanium nitride just to for example. So, this titanium nitride or you can use some MOS2 molydisulfide. So, this molydisulfide or titanium nitride coating can act as a lubricating layer. So, there are plenty of examples I will explain to you later, but self lubricated flame often used in the scenarios in the application scenarios where you do not need to use a lubricant as such. So, without the lubricants you can use the self lubricated flame to, re, to, to realize or to achieve similar level of reduced coefficient of friction and similar uh, similarly reduced wear rate which is important in the technological field. So, uh, if you mention uh, uh, if you remember that three material classes we have I have discussed with, uh, earlier one is called metals, another is called ceramics and third one is called polymers. So, metals, ceramics and polymers and then when they are when they are used in the tribological contact, what you see here that ceramics and metals they are different in terms of bonding and then also they are different in terms of elastic modulus. But in terms of the coefficient of friction suppose it is mu 1, this is mu 2 and this is mu 3. So, mu 1 is typically greater than mu 2 greater than mu 3. So, if you use the polymeric materials often 
you can achieve the coefficient of friction which you can otherwise uh, achieve in case of metals with boundary lubrication. So, without boundary lubrication you can achieve similar level of coefficient of friction in case of polymers. So, we will uh, we will deal with this most of the materials which are used for polymer uh, for tribological applications, what are the different uh, classes of new materials that are being developed to read with reduced friction and wear uh, in the subsequent lectures of this NPTEL course. Thank you.